Hello, I'm Natasha, the editor of Collins International Primary English. This is a six level course from Collins, which is specifically written to fully meet the requirements of the Cambridge Primary English curriculum framework. We're very excited to be publishing a new edition of our popular Collins International Primary English course to coincide with the updated Cambridge curriculum framework. We are offering an attractive self-contained course in which the engaging reading materials are supplied and supported by audio and visual resources, workbooks and comprehensive support for teachers in our easy to use teachers guides. I'm going to give you an overview of the course's aims and key features and will then take you through the different components and how these have been designed to cater to the needs of teachers and young learners. So let's begin with what you and your learners will get out of this course. The purpose of our course is to support teachers to deliver the objectives of the new Cambridge framework in an effective and engaging way, while supporting learners to develop lifelong skills. A central aim of the curriculum is to enable learners to become confident communicators who can apply reading, writing, speaking and listening skills effectively in everyday situations. It encourages learners to see themselves as both readers and writers and to develop essential speaking and listening skills, a broad vocabulary and an understanding of grammar and linguistic conventions. The new framework unpacks the learning objectives and provides greater detail about what is to be covered in each strand. In addition, there is more emphasis on closer integration of the main skills of reading and writing and speaking and listening and the importance of speaking and listening skills is highlighted, with these being central to each lesson. Moreover, there are slight adjustments to the level at which some text types are covered and some new text types are introduced. The new framework also puts greater emphasis on phonics, spelling, sentence structure and text structure. I will go on to demonstrate how the new edition of the Collins International Primary English course reflects all of these objectives. This new edition builds on the success of Collins International Primary English first edition. We have made fairly light updates to match the new curriculum requirements, refresh the reading materials and to improve a few features. However, the core series features will be maintained as many schools are familiar with the approach and achieve successful results using the programme. Based on market feedback, we will retain the popular series features of the clear and engaging design the teaching and learning sequence, the range and length of texts, the wide variety of topics and the supportive teacher's guide resources. So as well as meeting the demands of the new Cambridge framework, other key features of the course include the inclusion of engaging international texts by well-known authors with supporting colour illustrations and downloadable audio and visual whole class versions, a clear focus on skills throughout with differentiation to help each learner progress, an active, creative and reflective learning journey to allow children to discover and learn. Workbook activities to support each student's book unit and comprehensive teacher support with week by week learning overviews, lesson plans, answers to all learner activities and follow up worksheets to consolidate and extend learning. So let's move on to take a look at the components of the course. Collins International Primary English comprises six stages corresponding to the six class stages of primary teaching. For each stage, we provide three books, a student's book, a workbook and a teacher's guide. As part of the teacher's guide, we also offer an accompanying downloadable resource with worksheets, PowerPoints and audio files. We'll now have a look inside the course, starting with the student's books. The students' books offer a clear structure and easy to follow design to help learners to navigate the course. Each of the six stages is broken down into nine units and each unit is based around a central topic with two or three main reading texts at the core. The units are colour coded on each page for easy navigation and added appeal. As a new feature for this edition, the students' books begin with a how to use page. Written for the teacher, this page offers guidance on how each section of the lesson works and how to support learners to make the most out of the book. We then move on to the main section of the book, 
with colourful and highly illustrated pages throughout. Each unit begins on a new page with a clear heading at the top. The learner friendly instructions and questions are set out in a clear numbered order and the main skills covered in each activity are highlighted in tinted lozenges above. Some pages also contain notepad features with reminders of grammar and linguistic conventions, hints and interesting facts to support learners as they progress through the activities. As I've mentioned, each unit can include a couple of main reading texts. Each stage covers a rich range of highly engaging fiction and non-fiction texts by published authors, including some fantastic texts from Collins Big Cat, a widely successful and used reading series. The texts cover all genres and text types in the Cambridge curriculum framework and are supported by illustrations and photographs to provide enjoyment as well as essential support for learners. For this new edition, we have changed 10 to 20 percent of the texts per stage to refresh the series and to ensure our books match the new curriculum requirements. The revised editions of our students' books include further integration of reading and writing and listening and speaking skills, taking the approach that language is a whole. In addition, we have included a couple of new features. Word books are used throughout the course to support the development of phonics, spelling skills and a broad vocabulary. These encourage learners to compile their own personal dictionaries of interesting terms which they can refer to in their writing activities. Finally, each unit in the student's book ends with a thinking time activity in which learners are encouraged to reflect on what they have read, listened to, discussed and learned in the unit. So let's move on to take a look inside the workbooks. These are closely linked to the student's books following the same structure with the same unit headings for easy navigation. Each activity includes a clear reference to the relevant students book pages and the main skills covered are presented in the familiar tinted lozenges above. The workbooks have a simple clear presentation with varied tasks in a range of visually engaging formats. The activities can be used as classroom tasks for homework or for assessment purposes. They are designed to be write-in resources with structured spaces for learners to record answers. Each workbook ends with a how well did I do grid, encouraging learner reflection. Supporting text is provided in the teacher's guide to give advice on helping young learners with this reflective task. So finally, let's take a look inside the teacher's guides. As with the students books and workbooks, the teacher's guides have a clear design and structure which will be familiar from the first editions. The guides are structured to show how each of the nine units is designed to cover three teaching weeks. The teacher knows their class best, so they are free to vary the pace and amount of work covered each week to suit their circumstances. The teacher's guides begin with a comprehensive introduction, giving teachers information on the course, components and key features as well as extra information on phonics and laying the foundations of learning to read in the early stages. Following the introduction, each teacher's guide includes a matching grid linking each unit and its supporting texts to the curriculum framework learning objectives broken down into key strands. We then move on to the main lesson plan pages. Each unit begins with a unit overview, giving teachers information as to what text will be covered in the unit what skills will be the focus and ideas for cross curricular links or further study linking to the unit. There are then ideas for how teachers can introduce the unit, providing example discussion points around the topic to get learners engaged and excited. The beginning of each week's work is clearly shown in the lesson notes with a weekly overview box outlining the key strands and lesson outcomes for that week, as well as the supporting resources that are required for teaching. The lesson notes then offer detailed guidance for covering each unit with clear page navigation to the students books and workbooks set out as headings, key skills as subheadings and answers to the students book and workbook activities in grey boxes. Each week ends with a review feature comprising a table to assess each learner's progress and support and extension activity suggestions. This can be used for formative assessments as a tool to inform the next steps in teaching. Each unit then ends with a short end of unit task to allow teachers to gather cumulative assessment information. 
Both sets of review activities have accompanying worksheets. For schools following the Global Perspectives programme, there is a table at the back of each teacher's guide that identifies activities which teachers can make use of to practice global perspective skills. The grid matches the Global Perspectives skill and learning objectives to activities from the Collins International Primary English course. This feature is designed to encourage practice and development of these skills to integrate and embed them into children's learning in other subjects. As part of the Teacher's Guide offering, we also include a digital download from our website of worksheets, PowerPoints and audio files. The worksheets are also provided in the back of the Teacher's Guide and provide extra practice to consolidate or extend learning. Each worksheet is clearly referred to in the lesson notes so teachers will know when best to use them. Finally, the key reading texts from the students' books are provided on attractive PowerPoint slides for whole class reading and as audio files for listening activities and to allow learners to listen to accurate spoken English read with expression and at a suitable pace per stage. So I hope that was a helpful introduction to Collins International Primary English. I wish you the best of success with the Cambridge Primary English course.